What up, what up, fantasy football hustler, back at ya. There's Hannon. We got a very special episode today. This is one that you need to bookmark because we're telling you who you should let your stupid league mates draft and who you should avoid. This is going to be a big one. So... There's a lot of ways that we could do this, but I feel like you're going to let your stupid league mate draft this guy. One, it's because we think they're going to flop. Why? We'll talk Mm -hmm. about it. Second reason is going to be their ADP wise. We're just not touching them with the 10 foot pole. Doesn't mean they won't do good, but ADP wise is a little bit risky. Let's get in here. So let's start with the beginning of the draft. Who's one guy somewhat in the beginning that we should let our stupid league mates draft. Shit, bro. It's, it's, I don't know. I mean. All right, let me go first. It's wacky in the beginning. They're all good. You know what I mean? Like, I mean. Tony Pollard. You got to draft him in the Oh, I thought you said a top 12, bro. I'm like, you keep going. I, Tony I said, sucks. I just said in the beginning. Oh, okay. That part's objective. I was like, yeah. damn. They, I was like, he sucks. They really bringing him up that high now? Come on, man. He's going in the second round of these little QB drafts. You better let your dumbass league mates draft him. He's still hurt. I know he's getting out there in drills and he's working some first team stuff. And I know he doesn't really have too much depth behind him. So that's why people may be like super, super excited for him. But no, let your idiot league mates draft him because their line is trash compared to the past. Now with the new coordinator, I just see them not getting the running backs involved as much as they did in the previous years. It's really, they've improved their pass game, not the line, and they didn't really improve their defense too much, not to where it would make a difference on people like running the ball against him, running up the score. So that's my first pick right out the gate. Do not draft Tony Pollard. Let one of your stupid league mates draft him. It's where he goes to. I think that should be specific to a lot of these ones for me because this one's mine's Justin Fields in a super flex. Y'all could have him. You know what I mean? There's too many things that people you need to make too many cases for him to be good. Yeah. Based on and there's you like everyone. Yeah, you could base on what he did last year. It's a completely different look. A lot of that should I, I feel like they're gonna be better in a sense as far as their aerial attack and that's going to hurt him rushing you know what i mean so if he ain't a phenomenal passer or going for even if he goes for four thousand hey i'm going in for four thousand you know what i mean it's okay how many tugs you're going to get us with and how much rushing otherwise you're still going to be mediocre in fantasy if he's not getting 700 to a thousand yards rushing he better have 30 combined tugs and i don't even think he gets close to that and here we go. Here's another one is uh, another reason for fields. If you do not play in the ultra vanilla scoring of four point passing TD, if you play where it's any kind of six point passing TD for touchdowns, that's another reason why I don't want fields. Like I, I understand the people playing the super vanilla scoring and like the rushing QBs are like just super extra valuable. If you don't play in a league like that, you better be avoiding fields because any kind of six point per passing TD league, like I don't see him paying off the draft capital at all. Yeah, I don't know. What is he? Fucking 4,000. We got to hope he throws for 4,000. Even that. Like fucking J- everyone's saying, like, oh, watch the Jalen Hurts uptick. Hurts didn't even throw for 4,000 last year. Like people got crazy ass expectations right now on fields. Yeah, I don't know. And like, people, I hate it because people think they're really smart too. For sure. It's really like the super low hanging fruit. Oh, the rushing QB. And it ain't like anyone's projecting him to have a thousand because right. they, they, they just expect it because they saw it already. Right. You know what I'm saying? For sure. That's going to be very hard to replicate. I think only Lamar Jackson has done that two years in a row in the recent history. I'm saying that because I don't know if Michael Vick ever ran for a thousand two years in a row. I don't think so. And it was different with Lamar. He threw 36 touchdowns in addition to his rushing shit. So that was, he was like a different case 
Harbaugh was like, yeah, really handling biz with the play and, calling. And then it was unfair. And this is all in hindsight now to say the same thing about a fucking Carla Murray, because at least Carla Murray had the arm. You can't say this about Justin Fields. Yeah. You're yeah, going to go back. To, you're going to go back to Ohio. Be like, look at him in Ohio, bro. Shredding. Yeah. He had weapons. He has DJ Moore now and Claypool. Slap yourself. Tino said it right now. Claypool ain't no AJ Brown. Claypool ain't even Devonta Smith. Claypool might not even be a Quez Watkins. Like that's how bad he's been looking. And, okay. and when you start digging into the earth, how far do you got to get until you get to the clay? Man, not that far, really. Really? So he ain't even that underground type, <laughs> bro. It's soft, bro. You ain't even no granite. You clay, bro. You ain't granite pool. What up, AJ? Okay, so AJ says Ramondre Stevenson. Now, to be fair, he's someone when we started drafting that – when we start drafting, well, Yeah, he's going way now, too long. Not no more. Yeah, I feel like he, his ADP's cooled off a little bit, especially with all this Dalvin Cook news and shit like that. And they're, after they cut James Robinson and stuff like that, I didn't give a fuck anymore. I, 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 I remembered how much I love Stevenson, and I remembered how much people hate – New England running backs, and they just tend to play it safe. So this is why, like, someone who finished in the top 10 won't be drafted as such at the position. You know what I mean? Unless this guy's a top 10 finisher. Remember, because he plays for New England, nobody wants to give him no respect. And here, let's jump back to Tony Pollard real quick for Peacock. He said, way too rich for my blood. Saw him at RB number six on Matthew Barry's list. Exactly. Because, like, it's low-hanging fruit for these, like, Guys who are like, oh, it's just addition by subtraction. It's real easy to use that as any kind of case. But that line is trash. And <laughs> Pollard was great with efficiency when he was, like, not being game planned for. Like, yeah, because people are going to go, oh, look at his yards per carry. His fantasy points per touch. There's, like, extreme analytics like that, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, but – you're not basing it on the volume it's the efficiency and efficiency tends to come from like change of pace being fresh you know what i'm saying not getting 20 touches a game and let's remind everybody that he came out before that game where my niners and busted his leg in half he said coach i'm i'm not feeling too hot right i never got 20 touches let alone more than 16 in the game or something like it was something ridiculous bro and then he was getting 20 and he was wore down you know what I'm saying? And you know what? Just like this year is a contract year, last year was a contract year as well. Like he got franchise tagged because he wasn't worth any kind of big contract. He wasn't even worth a Dallas Cowboys team friendly deal to them. They you know, just rather franchise tag him, see what he does. And he have, if he acts like a little biatch this year, bet you they don't even re sign him. Let your idiot league mates argue with you and, and swear they're right. But one day they'll look in that mirror and be like, it was you who drafted Tony Pasta. <laughs> because we told you, damn ass, is not to do it too early, bro. You do that shit too early, bro. You know what I mean? Like, it's too much. Like, here's another thing. It's all the Cowboy fans that really pushed him up, bro. Yeah. Tell me somebody who won a oh, championship. Matthew, Matthew Barry, shit. Right there. Nobody I'm won a championship with Tony Pasta in the lineup, bro. <laughs> Nobody. Okay. They might have been, but you know what? Show me that because now I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did he do week 16 or week 17? Was he alive? <laughs> I know he was live during the playoffs, so. Yeah. And even Peacock said it. He said, Tony Pollard going before Henry? <laughs> you know what I say to that. Get the fuck out of here. That's insane that he would be, and he is being drafted. His ADP is higher than Henry. That's what's ridiculous. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, let's get off Tony. Fuck him. <laughs> Tino said, yeah, leave Tony Pasta for me. He'll only be there in the second, so you got to jump up to get him either way because some other fool is going to draft him. It just won't be us. I'm going to change my 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 team name in the East Side League to I'm drafting Tony Pollard. <laughs> All right, AJ. Fine, man. You want me to do it? I'm not scared. All right, Alexander Madison, let's go. Let your idiot league mates draft him because it is going to be the addition by subtraction. Same shit with Tony Pollard. Guess what? 
They didn't really do anything to improve their run game, so I get that part of it. They didn't really do anything to improve their defense minus Byron Murphy. What's his name? Murphy. Man, this the is, is damn for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that you know that that's no smart. Who did they bring in? But they didn't bring in Jordan Hicks. Oh no, that was last year, huh? Yeah, that was last year, which mm-hmm. he did solid, but yeah, man, all bad over there yeah. on defense. Either way, let's see what Brian Flores can do. Here's why I don't want Alexander Madison. Everyone just remembers. Oh man, he did so good in that one game. Oh, man, there, that was, there was four out of six games. That's what I'm saying, though. Four out of six is 66%. That is a D. That is not good. That is not great. That is okay. I'm not banking on it. It's always been. Four out of six is only 66? Damn. (laughs) It's not any good. No, it's really not. Only just a little bit over half. <laughs> two thir- two thirds, yeah. right there. So I, I started doing the math. I'm like, oh shit, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't want. I'm not paying for him where I gotta pay for him because we're talking single QB. For I bet the ADP goes even higher, but we're talking fourth, fifth round status where you got to get him. Another guy who was in the range last year that I said I didn't really want was Swift. And even though Swift paid it off as a whole throughout the entire season, there was a lot of games. On a per-game basis, it was really wet. You did not like it, and that's what I think Alexander Madison is going to be. Could he finish inside the top 12? Hell yeah, if he stays healthy, because there's probably going to be a bunch of RBs who get hurt, who jump out of it. But (laughs) RB12 is not so great on a game-to-game basis. I mean, he could get double-digit touchdowns total if he plays all year in a high-powered offense, because I could see him getting a few by way of uh, uh, touchdown receptions. I mean, he's the oh, guy that like teaming Justin Jefferson, and maybe he's wide yeah, open. He just walks. I mean, I I can think of two, two, three different instances. Last year, he, he caught a greasy tug down there in the red zone. You know what I mean? Yeah. But still, though, also it's like I'm of the mindset that like you know he probably contributes about five or six hundred yards. But we actually, I'm four or five hundred yards through the air to Kirk Cousins 5,000 this year. So I actually like Madison, but I don't have Madison because of where you have to pay for him. He's just only been going higher. Maybe because of his ankle he's dealing with, he drops a little bit, but it, that's what's funny about training camp drafting during this time during training camp is one little blurb will drop someone a couple spots. And then a couple of days later, they're back in practice. They'll bump, bump, bump them back up again. You know what I mean? Like, like Traylon Burks, remember people was good. There's a little, there's a little community of people bumping him up. So they bring over Nuke. I mean, no one talks about Traylon Burks no more. You know what I mean? Like things, yeah. just things like this happen in camp right now. If today they say, "Oh, M- Madison's being held out," and it's McBride, you, you better go trade McBride if you got him in Dynasty. You feel <laughs> me? Like you better use that blurb. Oh yeah. All right. You, who's another one? And it doesn't really matter where they're at. Just someone that you're not fucking with. It's the usual suspects. You said one of them, DeAndre Swift. <laughs> But I don't want to elaborate on that one because that one's just it's boring. It's just injuries and like high draft capital that I'm not willing to pay for that injury. You know what? I'm not going to get too low yet. Just remember to remind me about the bait man and all those other mans. But you know what? Pit man. Fuck yeah. him. Yeah. If you're to tell me it's the Ginsu right now, how about this? Let it be uglier in training camp. And if they switch it up drastically to Ginsu right before the year starts, I'll jump on board to the low ADP Pittman. Right now, he's still a little too high for nothing. Like, why are we, gra- why are we drafting him? He sucks right now. What up, Jose? What up, Jose? I just, like the Anthony Richardson hype, every piece of Anthony Richardson hype, is based off of him being athletic, him running, everything except like what we really need a quarterback to do with his wide receivers, and that's throw the ball. I know there's a couple blurbs about him doing all right. I'm not touching. I don't want any Colts <laughs> this year. That, that's really all. I'll even take a shot at Alec Pierce. I'm not, <laughs> I don't trust. I don't trust Richardson. I don't trust their line. It's like everything that we used to like about them is just completely changed. Yeah, and it's crazy because everything we liked about them is it's so 2021. Because yeah. 2022 them just didn't look anything like the 2021 them. Nah, they're trash. Yeah, it, it's crazy that Carson Wentz Colts was better than the Matt Ryan Colts. 
And there's just, I mean, you could just tell like the whole what, aura around the team. Like it is all bad, man. When I know Jonathan Taylor, he came back to camp or whatever, but he's hella pissed. It's just like, remember when the Jags, who was it? Was it Tom Coughlin who they hated over there and he was in the front office? Just a lot of bad juju around camp. People aren't happy to be there. And when you're just pissed off to be there, that's another reason I don't want to like fuck with the entire team. He's back at camp. Yeah. And you would say he's not a happy camper? Hey, yo. <laughs> 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 I'll be here all morning. And see, this is funny. Tino said, "Damn, AR, I watched AR15 a few days ago. He looks pretty good, bro." <laughs> Everybody looks good when you're like not really wearing pads in practice. People aren't going full speed, <laughs> you know. Everybody, it, <laughs> not everybody. Desmond Ritter is looking really bad out there, and so is Baker. But you know, that's neither here nor there. I'm not buying the AR15, a rookie. I'm not buying them as a rookie. Like any kind of past weapons, not buying. You just said two shitty guys, right? Ritter <laughs> and uh, Baker. And I will throw Richardson in that mix as well, as far as shitty, in my opinion. But here's why I know I would not want Richardson too. Is he don't even have weapons like Baker does, or <laughs> like Sam Howell does, or Ritter does. Or like Ritter, it, it's yeah. crazy. Like I'll take the chance on the shittier guy. He has more playmakers around him. Needing to bank on this guy I've never really seen, you know what I'm saying? And he's the weapon. I need him to be the weapon. If How Jonathan can we Taylor, bank on Pittman at all, like right now? What has Pittman done to show nothing. us he deserves to be drafted in the fifth round? <laughs> no, yeah. nothing. It's the pits, man. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it at all. Yep. Okay. I guess I want to just fade the entirety of uh, of uh, the Bills running backs. <laughs> okay. I know everyone's getting on James Cook right now, but I don't know, man. I just I guess the Singletary numbers is what I can bank on. But now he's jumping up. He jumped up pretty. He jumped up significantly over the weekend. You know what I'm saying? He was closer to a double digit rounds. Now he's getting up there and this uh, he's getting he's, I mean I guess he's still right. Where is he at now? Is he still right outside the top 36 at running back, James Cook? I mean he's close to there, man. Like I, I'm really fucking with James Cook with where he's going. He's going so late. Okay. I'm just but that's why I preference it as the entirety of that backfield. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just let somebody else deal with that. You know what I mean? Dennis said Denver's interested in JT or Josh. <laughs> Come on. Until it's like someone with their front office like coming out, I, this could be a lot of just report like the beat reporter clickbait and shit like that. Like even the Kansas City, it all sounds good, but it, I think that's just the low hanging fruit for these guys. Yeah, like, writing headlines. like uh, of course, any good organization is gonna inquire. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to make the move, but they're going to inquire to see if it's even feasible. And how about that? J- Javante and Brees Hall. Like, I'm okay being wrong about them. I'll let Samidia draft them too high. You know what I mean? Yeah. I-, I think they might clog up my bench even a little bit. You know what I'm saying? If they don't, if they're not starting week one, you got to hold them. And yeah, Javante looks like he's going to start week one. That's only going to, it's only going to keep boosting him up. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'll be a little upset that I don't have any Javante when he was like going the eighth, ninth round. Yeah, sure. I'm super flex. Hey, what up, Clock? Clock what said, up, who do you think the lowest completion percentage for a QB is in the Hall of Fame? Give me a, give me like at least a two decade span. <laughs> like just give me two decades that this person might be in because. I really don't know the completion percentage. Terry Bradshaw. I think he had a. I think Terry Bradshaw. I'm just gonna throw. I'm just throwing out names at right. He didn't throw that much, and he was pretty efficient, pretty damn efficient. Okay, because I was gonna say I know you didn't throw that much. Oh, oh, Joe Namath is Joe Namath. Ooh, that might be a good one. I don't think Broadway was known for being very efficient, even in that big Super Bowl that he guaranteed to win. He just handed that thing off to glory. You know what I mean? 
Oh, clock said what percentage? I'm going with 69. 69, dude. I'm going with 69. 69%. Gotta be. <laughs> Yaku Mania, what up, bro? What? <laughs> <laughs> we did what? have running football for like decades, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, oh, Jake said the Jets said they're interested in Dalvin. But see, that's what's crazy is like the Jets Dalvin news is what's pushing Brees down. But then we heard that the that the what's called that they're out on him, but his ADP hasn't been affected yet. I think we need to see Dalvin Cook officially get signed somewhere, and then we're going to see Brees's ADP go way back up. And then here's another thing too: is Devon Devon A Chain the little small little tiny fucker that the Dolphins drafted? He got he came up lame in yeah. practice and then it, that immediately correlated the next day with them talking about oh yeah we're firing up talks with dalvin cook again you know what i mean yeah and that's where you guys if you if anyone who likes dalvin cook you better want him to go to the dolphins you don't want him to go anywhere else bro this is the same thing i said with cmc when everyone last year when i when the rumors were cmc is going to get traded i said no one wants him to get traded anywhere but for the Niners, that way it's good for me in reality and for everyone else in fantasy as well. And I was right. You know what I'm saying? Just stop bullshit here. You don't want Cook to go anywhere else except for Miami. Otherwise, it's gonna piss some. It's gonna piss off the Brees Halls or the Stevensons or the fucking where else he say he might go. Just yeah, even yeah. the Dolphins. Yeah, no one cares about Jack Wilson. All the AFC East. All the AFC East. All the AFC East. We don't like it. We don't like it. We don't except like it except for the Dolphins. Yeah. Because I don't, we don't care too much about Raheem Mostert or Jeff Wilson. Those guys, shit, you're those guys. It's crazy. They're like legit free <laughs> in leagues right now, and they're going to be splitting tandem. They're going to be the split duo over and, there, and they tend to get hurt too. So it's like it'll like one guy will get more work at one point or another. But you know what I'm saying? Like it just be it be like that. That's why I really feel like they're going to make a push for a Dalvin Cook. They Look at their rookies already hurt. It's almost like Josh McDaniels just brings over that Niner backfield curse with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. I know that we already mentioned a little bit of Anthony Richardson, but I'm going to come out and I'm just going to make a claim on all these rookie quarterbacks. Let your idiot league mates draft the rookie quarterbacks in a redraft league. Man, we are trying to win out of the gates. and. Who's going to trade you for a rookie QB, whether it's super flex, whether it's single QB, it doesn't even matter. That's what's wild is like, even in single QB leagues, some of these rookie QBs are getting drafted. Let someone else draft them. I got to push back on one of my own joints right here. It's something I have to remind myself on. It's just a forever fade OBJ. I keep trying to make a case, like, because he's so late, and he what if he's like, at, like circa AB twenty twenty, where he's just like a late addition to your roster that actually gets in your lineup. You know what I mean? Maybe I mean, like, what if he's always late? But then his man, he's a bitch. <laughs> and don't let him get a couple good catches or something like that in the training camp, and this motherfucker gets shoot up. Because him being a double digit is the only time I'll make a case for him. But most of the time, it's an idiot that drafts him. Yeah. It's got to be free. It's got to be bottom of the barrel. It's got to be. I'm really just trying to like literal dart throws that could be dropped in a single QB in a single QB guy. He's a single digit guy. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's ugly, man. That's just, yeah, uh, I don't want it. Christian like, Kirk's another one. Mm, I know that this one might ruffle a few feathers. People love some Christian Kirk. I'll let some idiot draft them. Yeah, you, you add Calvin Ridley. And a motherfucking Evan and Evan Ingram's br- got brought back. You know what I mean? That slot role, you know what I mean? That's the money right there. And if Christian Kirk's out wide, I don't know, man. You bet, he, man, he's the guy you could just jam him at the line. Like, I, I don't like it at all. Christian Kirk, people's going to chase last year's numbers and he's going to be used differently, predominantly out wide. Speaking of Christians, I like this one, AJ, because I'm not drafting Christian Watson anywhere there was so much efficiency during that five game stretch or whatever it was with Aaron Rodgers. I, he could be a volume play. He could be, but he is being drafted way, way too high year, for me. year two. And the league's on notice. And now they're on notice to 
with their number one coverages and, and all that shit. And it ain't Rogers throwing him the ball. <laughs> Fade. There goes one. I noticed you noticing me. And I just wanted to put you on notice, notice. that I'm noticing you too. <laughs> you know that? Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah, so I'm with you. I am not drafting Christian Watson at all. <laughs> All right, here's one. I took a stand on this guy last year. I'm planting my flag on the do not draft this guy at all this year because we've got nothing but drama already, and it's J.K. Dobbins. He thinks he warrants a new contract right now. He's coming into camp already hurt. They put his ass on the PUP list. They brought in Melvin Gordon. <laughs> they brought Melvin Gordon in and paid him three that million. Raises a lot of eyebrows <laughs> when you bring in someone like Melvin Gordon in the third. That is bad. That is bad. Do not draft J.K. Dobbins at all. Do not draft him. I don't care how late he goes. Who's a, another interesting one, bro? I mean, it's just motherfucking. See, there's certain things I just won't do, like Charbonnet, but it's I can't say someone's an idiot because Walker could die, and if you are just happen to be holding on to Charbonnet, you're feeling good about it. But so I'm not gonna say Charbonnet, but I do feel a way about a lot of these rookie running backs. It's just that I won't. I'll let someone else. I'll, yeah, you know what I'll say. All the rookie, the, a lot of those rookie running backs outside of Bijan and Jameer Gibbs. I'll let some idiot draft, some idiot league make draft them because then, then I'll pick them up when they drop them. You know what I mean? Yeah, because most of the same thing with the rookie wide receivers. Maybe not JSN, but that's just really what. Guy I- Addison or like. If you know, I feel like that, but see, I feel like they're all number threes initially, right? Yeah. Jason, Addison, Quinn Johnston, Zay Flowers. But Zay Flowers might be the one that could be a two. You know what I'm saying? Because what if he gets favored over OBJ just because of the, the respect OBJ is going to get from defensive right. coordinators? Right. Who's, to, who's to say? But then also, if you ask me about Zay Flowers, I think he's just a Z receiver this year. He's just stretching the field every time. You know what I mean? Could this not happen with JSN? That's just the first four games. The first four games, it's always polarizing because they did great, and it's like everyone remembers those four games. Or they did bad or mm-hmm. mediocre, and everyone shits on them, and all you yeah. remember is that first four games. Could mm-hmm. he not come out, have three to five targets, let's say three to five receptions, 40, 50 yards, and no tugs in the first four games and potentially get dropped by some of yeah. these teams with five bench spots. Yeah. And then it'll be a case of, like for JSN, it's going to be the lower snap counts initially. If he's not catching on in a playbook fast, he's not going to be installed in a lot of those in those plays initially. You know what I'm saying? But then you could use examples like – um Quinn Johnston, he might not ever see the field for real, except for a three wide receiver sets or four wide receiver sets. Oh. But really, I like him just because of the injury history to Keenan Allen or Mike Williams. Like I feel like I have a high probability if I was to hold on to him. I don't want to draft these guys though. Just We're out of here. Hand them over. <laughs> we'll see you guys back for FNT in a couple hours. Bogey, any parting words? Hand him over. Peace out. Just give me. Defense on me. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Here comes the ball. 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 Are you ready, Jerry? I'm ready. Just want to make sure you're ready, brother. Show me the money. Oh, you didn't know? Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. You put my shoes on, you wouldn't last a mile. Summertime, when it's time, I'm on the grind. Yeah, I got the ring, I'm the champ, I'm the genie of the lamp. This is the gift I was given, so I just live by my hustle. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Y
but don't make a profit. It's all a hustle, ladies and homies. Make money, make money, money, money. <laughs> Okay, let's go smoke that joint.